props to go with it. So, hi! Hello, my friends. Betty McNitt here. I'm going to work on my Ridgy Ditch tonight. It is um, the 19th video that I've made about it, but it's not the 19th day. So, um, however complicated that is, here it is. I'm a little over halfway done. I think I have like nine stripes to go. But you know, I don't usually crochet. I don't usually crochet so late at night on live, but here I am. I just was settling down to crochet, and this is what I wanted to work on. I haven't been on here in a couple of days, so um, I'm starting to get that feeling of like, let's get her done, let's get her done, let's get the ridgy ditch done. All right, here we go. Um, let's see. I am using Lion Brand Respun Yarn in six colors, and the name of the colors are Cranberry, Heliotrope, Sahara, Amber, Dark Denim, and Fjord. And the hook that I'm using is a Furls Odyssey. May they rest in peace. I hook, which I believe is a five and a half millimeter. To be honest, I kind of wish I had done an H, but this blanket is 14 points across. It's a very very large adult size blanket. So it has definitely been more than six days. I think it's been 12 days. Um, I think this is the 19th video, but I think it's around the 12th or 13th day. Um, so that's, that's the way the six day crochet goes. It takes longer than six days if you upsize it. Okay. So I'm going to put this overhead so that you all can watch me crochet. And um, let's see, I'm on TikTok and I'm in my Facebook group um, for the blanket, which I bought a dot com for that group today. So um, it's actually six day crochet group dot com. So that will be a lot easier to tell people um, to go to. Wow, this is like, this is so weird. Why can't I zoom in? I used to be able to like, I don't, I don't know why I can't, I can't really zoom anymore like I used to. Oh, that's weird. Okay. So, um, another aspect of this blanket besides the yarn, the hook and the colors, um, and the pattern of course is the stitch balm that I'm using, it's an aromatherapy stitch balm from a company called Scented Stitches. And um, it comes in four cents. And I have an affiliate link in my bio. If you want some, you should get some because it's really lovely. So this is what you do with it. You So I have only used this on this. I, I got a little sloppy, so I'm just going to clean it up by putting it on my finger. Um... I have only used this on this blanket, so I'm a little more than halfway, and it looks like I'm about halfway done with this stick of balm. I put it on my finger at the beginning of the row and in the middle. I have a stitch marker in the middle of the row to remind myself to reapply. So there we go. That's what's going on there. Hang on, let me check my let me check what's happening on YouTube. It says I'm live. I don't believe you, YouTube. Oh yeah, there I am. Okay. All right. I got you. I got you. Hey, Pat, how's it going? How many times have you done Bikram this week? I think I've only done it once. Oh, wow. 44 people here. Hi. Hey, Jen. Jen says, I slide one finger up on the screen. Uh, no, it, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Um, some, something's not right, but it's okay. 
<sighs> Sprained my ankle today, so I suddenly have more crochet time. Lucky you! Don't wait until you hurt yourself to crochet more. Doing again Thursday and Saturday. I have a feeling I'm not going to make it to class in the morning tomorrow. I usually go at 8.30 online, but I have a feeling I'm not going to make it tomorrow because I'm on here so late. So, um, we'll see. You never know. It depends on how bright the sun is in the morning. Um, Well, I wasn't able to zoom the other day because I had put a sticker on the screen and the only thing that would zoom was the sticker. And so I was like, I'm never doing that again because I can't zoom in and now I can't zoom in. So I don't know, maybe I need to just like restart my phone or something. All right, let's see, where am I starting at row five? of the heliotrope. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like there's enough chains there. There's not. I, in fact, I didn't chain at all. Durr. Uh, one, two. All right. I can't believe it's Wednesday already, hump day, right? Whatever that means. It's like tomorrow's Thursday. I feel like a whole week has gone by already again. Like, zoop, zoop, zoop. Week's over. I'm going to have to go downtown again. I'm going to go into town. I feel like I'm in Little House on the Prairie or something. I have to make a trip into town. It's because I live in kind of a remote area and um, the closest Walgreens is like 30 minutes away. And so I have to go down there to get a prescription. I went back to the doctor on Tuesday because I was just still feeling crappy. And I was, I woke up and I was coughing a little bit more than I had been. Um, so I went to the doctor and I was like, I just want to knock this out. <clears throat> and um, they said, you're fine. <laughs> you don't have pneumonia. You're just still coughing. It takes a long time to get over this thing. I've been super sleepy. Just not feeling great. So they gave me, I said, could you at least give me something that will help me breathe and like an inhaler. And so they, they gave me an inhaler and then I went across the street to the pharmacy to get it. And they were like, we don't have anything for you. So I called them back and they were like, okay, we'll call it in. So I just sat there at the Walgreens and I was just scrolling my phone and I was like, you know, Walgreens, they'll send you a text when your thing is, when you're prescription is ready. So I just sat there for like, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, just waiting for the text from Walgreens that said it's ready. And so, um, it never came. So I went home. I was like, this kind of sucks. Cause then I'm going to have to come all the way back here. And well, today's Wednesday. That was yesterday. That was Tuesday. That was, was that yesterday? No. That was Monday. I think that was Monday. I don't remember what day that was. I think it was Monday. So anyways, that's been my week. Today I didn't crochet much. I was working on some other stuff. 
and um, I got kind of involved in that, but I did walk down to the beach today and it was cold and windy and the beach is mad. I'm working on two six-day kid blankets. Everyone's having babies at the same time. Thanks for following. Everyone's making star blankets right now. Goodness. <sighs> Whoops. I just wanted to get a little work done on this blanket tonight. I just feel like I have such a long way to go on it. I am really ready to move on to another project. And there are some people that really wanted me to do this six day great granddaddy blanket. And I feel like that one does probably need some love. Um, <clears throat> but we'll see. We'll see. I don't know if I want to do another whole large project like this on lives. Again, it is a lot. And, um, you know, I was not planning on being sick and that just dragged the whole thing out. This should have been long done long done oh goodness i've got three projects going one blank this isn't the only project i have going but this is the project that i am doing from start to finish on lives so i can only work on this when i'm live only when i'm live so i can't just go sit in front of Netflix and work on it for, you know, if I could do that, I could get it done tonight, tomorrow, you know, stay up all night and crank it out. That's nothing. I barely even have to think, but I only am doing this on lives. So it has taken me, you know, this is my, this is the 19th video that I've made, but like, Last time I was live, I made two videos because my camera went out and I had to restart. So I think that has happened three or four times with this blanket. I started counting days when I actually started the blanket, but I had at least two, maybe three days of swatching and making decisions about... Um, what size I wanted, you know, what size I was going to make and what, um, what size I was going to make, what colors I was going to use, how many stripes, what size, measure it out, figure out the swatch, blah, 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 all that stuff. I mean, really the six day star blanket is trending right now. And I feel like I should do a star blanket, but I spent all of September and a lot of October doing star blankets. I did so many star blankets. I mean, maybe that's why they're trending right now. Because I did that star blanket September. Star blankets dash bus September. I should do that again. That was fun. That was good. 
cleaned it up. I cleaned up the stash. I'm still doing stuff with that stash. I had all those Ogos. I didn't even realize how many I had, which was crazy because I had a bunch of them on my shelf and I think I probably had at least a hundred of them. I don't know where they all came from. Um, but I bought them because I wanted to make those, those, uh, a blanket for my friend, Kristen with the beach house, Airbnb. And so I did, I made her one and then I didn't like it and I ripped it out and then I started a second one and I liked it a lot but then I thought mm, this doesn't really match and um so I started a third one for her but thankfully I didn't rip out the second one there was a change on every row and I just this happens to me sometimes I will be working on something and I'll be like, mm, this is terrible. And I have learned not to just go hog wild and rip it out. But I have learned to leave it, let it marinate, set it aside and come back to it later. Um, so I did that with that project. And lo and behold, I came back to it later and I was like, this is okay. Um, but I'm still going to finish this other one. So I ended up finishing two for her and giving them both to her. And I was actually right. She didn't, she liked the, um, she liked both of them, but the one where I changed colors on every row, she was, uh, basically thought it didn't really match the wallpaper because the proportion of some of the colors was off. Amanda says, I finished my Ridgy Ditch star working on a Ridgy Ditch six day blanket and a 16 point star. Holy moly, you are the six day queen. That 16 point star that I have in the McNitiverse right now, and I'm going to leave it up until Valentine's Day. And then it's going to go into the, it's going to go into the lineup of exclusive patterns. So right now, um, people only get one a month unless it's in the bonus content. So it's in bonus content right now. So that means when you join, you get it. And then, um, I'm going to take it out of the bonus content and I'm going to put it in the lineup. So once it goes into the lineup, um, you're not going to get it until like, I don't know, the third month or something like that, or fourth month, or I don't remember which month I put it in. But it's a good one. There's an eight point star and there's a 16 point star in the McNitiverse. So when you see those, you know that person's a member and they join the McNitiverse to get it. And I'm never going to release it. I'm never going to release those two blankets outside of the membership community. So if you want them, you have to get in there and get it. Get it now because it was, it was for Christmas was when I put it out as bonus and then a lady I have pre-releases in there which are things that are um, just basically ideas that I've had that I've written up and they will be in various stage of draft completion so they might be all the way done and ready just waiting for me to work up a sample and photograph it and complete it. Um, but the stitches are done. It's all done. It's ready. Um, or it might just be like, here is the, like the latest thing I did, um, was the hooded pocket shawl and that I actually made one. I made one and I wrote it up but it like hasn't been through testing or anything. Nobody else has made it besides me. 
So it's probably full of, you know, weird stuff I overlooked. So you'll find things that are in various stages of draft in there. But, um, but that's in there, the hooded pocket shawl and the poncho, the star blanket poncho is drafted up and a lady made one for her Valentine's Day and she sent me the picture of it today and she said it turned out really pretty. She loves it and she said the pictures don't do it justice. Star blankets are really hard to photograph. Very hard to take a good picture of. And the shawls, same with those. And then in the spring, I want to make a sunflower themed superstar blanket. Somebody has done that in my group. So if you join my Facebook group um, and search for search sunflower, probably find pictures of it and what yarn she used. Um, you, we used to, in my group, we used to be really strict about when someone posted a picture of a finished blanket we would, um, you know, make sure that they posted all the yarn that they used and the yardage and the finished measurements and which hook they used and which pattern and all those things. I want to do the superstar next. I think I've done a 60 superstar crochet along on here before but I'm not sure. Maybe I'll do that again. I have a tweak I want to make to the six day star blanket patterns actually. So once I do that, then I'll have to redo all the videos and everything. It's really a pain in the butt. Y'all have to have these videos to follow. Like, I don't know why y'all don't believe me that the video coming from me is not going to be that helpful, you know, but you still insist, where's the video? Where's the video? I need a video. And then I give you a video and you guys are like, this video is horrible. I'm like, I told you. Tried to tell you. That's what being a crochet designer is all about being a horrible person. <laughs> Excuse me. Do you hear that? And it was getting a little bit wheezy too. I was a little worried because it was sounding wheezy to me. And I was like, if I'm wheezing, I, it's pneumonia. I don't want to have that. And I just want to I just want to um, cut it off at the pass, you know? I just want to cut it off. I don't even want to start with that. So, but I don't, she said my lungs are clear, so. Hi, Camille.
I don't know how much I'm going to do tonight because it's so late, but I just wanted to. It helps that you did all of the setup rows step by step. Yes. I did them again. I filmed another video and took more progress pictures the other day, but I haven't gone back to edit it. That's the part I hate, the editing. But I'll get all caught up eventually. How's everything going with you, Camille? Oh my God, do you have the tutorial for that pattern? What pattern? I just, when somebody asked me for a tutorial, I'm just like... Do you uh, do, use the pattern? Like, even if I do have a tutorial, you can't use it in place of the pattern. This isn't a sweater. This is a blanket. And um, no, there's not a tutorial for it, but there will be a pattern for it. And there will be a crochet along video where I make the entire thing. But I do not make the kind of tutorials that you can just follow without a pattern. And I have to tell you that there are some patterns that are too hard, I think, to do that with. You can't, not every crochet pattern is, you know, able to be conveyed in its entirety by a video. Y'all keep insisting on just using the video without the pattern. And you can't. You got to learn how to read patterns. If you want to make anything in crochet that's more advanced than like an entire blanket of one stitch, then you have to learn how to read, do some pattern reading. Didn't even know there was a video. Well, I'm making it right now. <laughs> this is it. So that um, this, I have worked this entire blanket from start to finish. Well, I'm, but I'm not done yet. So I'm doing this from start to finish on live. So you, if you want to go back and start it from the beginning, you can start it from the beginning with me. You can work the whole blanket along with me. And you have to listen to all my dumb stories. <laughs> um, I explain the stitches for the first uh, repeat, maybe, of the rounds. And then after that, I just start, I just talk. Because it's repetitive. It's the same seven rows, you know, 24 times. I'm not going to sit here this whole time and be like seven, seven double crochet, skip two, seven double crochet, you know, I guess I could. Yeah, it's not a sweater. It's just a shrug. I mean, I... I, I feel like a tutorial, in a way, it is a tutorial for how to read a pattern, you know? If your main, if the main project comes off of a pattern. The shrug that I'm wearing right now is called the Six Day Shrug. I mean, you don't actually think I'm like crocheting the sweater and wearing it at the same time. These are two different things. I forgot to stitch balm at the beginning of the row. 
came to crochet after learning after years of knitting it's like learning a second language okay well that's interesting I started out with crochet and then I learned to knit but as a knitter learning to crochet so I think I'm going to make like a little mini course to, to teach knitters how to crochet what um what like what did you find as a knitter what skills did you already have as a knitter that you found helpful to you in learning crochet I was a long time crocheter and then I started knitting and I was like, I'm never crocheting again. But then I did find that there were times when I wanted to crochet and not knit, but sometimes I really want to knit counting and tension. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Not sure what's happening here, but I'm going to cut this out. I did forget to say at the beginning of this row that this is row six. This is the ridgy Didge row. And um, the six day blanket is the stitches are the same for all the different versions of it. The stitches are more or less the same. What makes it look different is by changing colors on different rows of the blanket. So on this version, we change colors between rows five and six. And then on row six, instead of doing double crochet the normal way, we do front post double crochet. And it creates a ridge, a textured ridge on the other side. And then you get like a nice contrast of colors if you change, uh, if you also change colors. A lot of people like to use cake yarn for this pattern and it works up beautifully. Cake yarn was made for the six day blanket, period. So even if you don't change colors, you will still get that textured ridge line and it will look amazing. You don't have to change colors intentionally, but that is how the, um, how the pattern variations work. They have color changes on different rows to create a different look every time. The names of the different color, the, the different stripes are Vivid Chevrons. That's the original. And it has um, the Granny Rose uh, framed by the single crochet rows. And then the double crochet rows are contrasted. And then after that came the snowflake effect, and that's where people were changing colors between rows two and three. And then we had the viral blanket, which I think was just people who couldn't figure out how to change colors the vivid stripes way, vivid chevrons way. And so they just 
Follow the repeats, two through seven, two through seven, two through seven, and change colors accordingly. Pat's using Lion Brand's ice cream yarn. I've seen many six day blankets, uh, kid blankets and star blankets in the ice cream yarn. It looks amazing. Yeah, so two through seven is the viral. The thing that I don't like about two through seven uh, viral stripes is that people were ending on row seven and you're really supposed to end the blanket with a half repeat at the end. And so I um, figured out a way to combat that by uh, squaring off the top and bottom of the blanket and um, making a way to make the top and bottom symmetrical and also keep that viral stripe on the repeat two through seven um, without having to have a half a stripe of a different color at the end. Um, so that that uh, probably doesn't make any sense until you crochet that project and go ahead and try and do it and wait until you're about three stripes from the end and you go, wait a minute, how am I supposed to make the top match the bottom that's how um let's see what others are there snowflake effect um and then we have some variations on the snowflake effect which are the confetti effect or the australian confetti effect or the sweetheart effect and that is where you either add a third row of granny um, and contrast the middle of the granny row or you switch colors. Um, you switch to the next color on the first granny row and then you switch back to the color that you were on on the next granny row and then you switch colors and you continue. So it's like this uh, back and forth kind of colorway and it's pretty cool looking. It looks like little hearts. So that's why I call it sweetheart. The sweetheart, like uh, sweetheart stripe. Hey, Andrew. And then there's one called the popsicle and the popsicle is basically um, another variation of snowflake. But instead of having one color for three, four, five, six, seven, and two, and then changing and doing three, four, five, six, seven, two, um, what she did was she had like her lightest color at two, and then the darkest color at three, and then she changed colors five times getting lighter in tone until she was back at the lightest color again. So it just created this high contrast pop effect and we call that one the popsicle. It looks really cool, but I don't see a lot of people making that one because it has a lot of color changes and uh, people don't like to weave in ends. Yeah, this is really late for me to be on here goofing around. Now I'm starting to feel tired. Only This is only my second row. But to be fair, rows five and six are the rows that take the longest. Or six is the longest row. So maybe I'll pick up some steam after this ridge row.
Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so some of that yarn in there is the yarn that I did the um, Crocheters Learn to Knit course with. That yarn was left over than that from that. The wool is thick and quick. I didn't even know you were going to try and knit either when I sent you that. But I hope you find it useful. It was kind of just a lot of random stuff. What do you think of those hooks? That made it there faster than uh, they said it would. Yeah. Well, you know what? Use them for your photos. That's what I do with hooks like that, that I, that look good, but I don't really, you know, I'm really not really going to use them. I, I put them in photos like this one, you know, like these, these are nice, but I don't use them. They look great in photos, you know? Anyone else have day projects and night ones? Yes. The night ones are for sitting in front of the TV. Ripped out my knitting project and back at square one. It's okay. You don't have to rip things out when they don't go right. You can set them aside and start a new one. The dogs interrupt me too much during the day. I feel like my day projects are the ones that are like for work that I have to, you know, pay attention as I'm doing them and write things down. And they're for like patterns that I'm trying to write up and release. I definitely feel like I need to do stuff like that during the day. Because I don't have the energy for it at night. <coughs> I just want to sit and relax and crochet. And that was, that was where I was at tonight when I hopped on. I thought I just want to sit and work on that rigid edge for a little while. I want to get some work done on that. It's starting to drag on too long for me. And it's speaking of long, it's really long. I knew it was going to get difficult to um, like handle. Thank you. It's just a, um, it's just a shrug. It's just the sleeves. It's the six day shrug. is another pattern that I should really revisit. I'm going to do the one you're working on next after this day one is finished. Well, this, um, you can go on my YouTube and find all the replays for the whole thing all the way back to the beginning of it um, when I did the swatch. The only thing is I did the swatch but I didn't really do a good explanation about how to measure the swatch and how to figure out how many points how many points and chains across that you need Okay, and then I definitely did not do a good job of showing how I figured out how many stripes I would need.
I was really confused because I thought I needed like three, an odd number of colors, three, five, or seven. I was saying all this dumb stuff. And then I was like, well, I want to do six colors. And that was like the one number I, I was like, the one number that won't work is six. And then I was wrong about that. So yeah. I can't do math under pressure. I have to figure out what it is I'm trying to say and what math I'm trying to convey and write it all down. And then I can go on the video and be like, this is what I'm measuring. And this is, you know, the math and this is how it works out. I get stage fright. I think it's from like having to go up to the blackboard and being put on the spot, having to perform math, and I would always get stuck. Andrew, I think if you, I was looking at that little course, I don't think I have a good materials list, but if you get yourself a 16 inch double pointed needle in, you know, whatever size it is that I recommend there, then I think you will have an easier time knitting than whatever it is you were knitting with, which looked like worsted weight and size seven or something. And you have the yarn, the wooly is thick and quick that I um, recommend because I just sent you some. Get yourself a 16 inch needle, circular needle. And I know you're probably impatient, but like place an order and order the exact thing you need and wait for it to come in and then start. But I think I'm gonna rerun that class and redo the content in the video because if I remember correctly, I used Zoom to film it and like people weren't muting and they were talking a lot and there was a lot of background noise. And every time somebody said something or a dog barked in the background, um, their video was the one that was like showing. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. So I need to redo it. I, I think I'm just going to reset it. I'm going to put it out there and do a, do a live filming and offer the class for like a discount and do all the, you know, film all the content for it. A lot of distractions. Yeah, that's, I, I remember that. I remember being very frustrated by that and people jumping in and trying to, trying to um, correct me or try to tearing to teach it a different way and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's why I never posted that class publicly because uh, the content wasn't quite right. But I'm going to go back and visit it and then revisit it. And then I want to do one for knitters. I want to do Knitters Learn Crochet. I'm going to move this up. This is my little reminder to re-put the balm on my finger.
Um, which would you recommend, wooden or metal needles? Uh, well, there's also plastic and double pointed too, which I think would be fine. Uh, wooden needles are going to be a little more sticky, so you won't have as many problems with, uh, with uh, wood or plastic. I would say wood is going to be the stickiest and um, therefore you're not going to have stitches just sliding off like you might with metal needles. But it's one of those things like crochet hooks, you kind of have to try them all. What I don't recommend is getting one of those interchangeable sets because what if you don't like them? You know, it's very possible you won't like it. My favorite metal needle is the Addy Turbo. But I think in that, even in that class, I was, um, I was knitting with plastic, a plastic double pointed needle. So you can get a plastic one from, you know, a cheap one from Joann's or uh, Michael's or wherever. That's what I would get the least expensive one until you have the chance to um, uh, get, the, get the hang of it and, uh, and, and try out different things and figure out what you like. Yeah, so I would just get the cheapest. I thought I had affiliate links, actually, for needles and double points and stuff in that course. But I'll have to go through it again and check it. Hey Heather, thank you. I feel happy about them. They make me feel good. I like it. Andrew, I had to go and get you a bigger box for that yarn. And even after I had the bigger box, I still tried to stuff a bunch of stuff into it. I had a big kit of chunky yarn. I thought I'll have to send that to him in the next round of stuff. But if I had known you were going to knit, I would have sent you the knitting needles to go with that yarn and the double points. Thank you so much, Lacey. I do my best. Did I just do that whole single crochet without even thinking about it? I guess I did. No, I do not sell completed items. There are plenty of people who do on Etsy and other places. Star blanket is so easy to make. Anyone can crochet one, even if you don't know how.
been crocheting tiny red apples for keychains for my daughter's team. I'm not an amigurumi gal, and I don't think I'm going to become one. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> never, never. What do you do with all the star blankets you make? Well, first of all, they're samples for my business. So I publish patterns, and I, I'm writing books this year. And so I need the samples for, you know, photography for the projects. And then once I am certain, 100% certain that I am done with them, then I give them to people that I love. I do not make gifts for everybody in my life. Only someone that I really love and feel, um, you know, have the feelings for will get a handmade gift from me. I make a lot of stuff for my daughter because she loves and truly appreciates the things that I make. Um, so do my nieces. Um, other, uh, you know, young kids in my life that I'm close to. I made them all star blankets. Man, I just thought of something I need a box for, and I just threw a bunch of boxes away. Don't you hate when you do that? Thanks for sharing the live, Andrew. You guys, hit me with some likes and stuff and share. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I think I don't get a lot of likes and stuff, uh, because I, um, everybody's crocheting. <laughs> I get it, because I do the same thing. I sit and watch people crochet while I crochet. Thanks for sharing, Mrs. P. I have been so sick and not really wanting to go outside where it's cold because it hurts my lungs. Um, but I did not even realize like how bad the weather was. Um, I, I guess I realized, like I noticed yesterday, was it, or the day before that, that, like I could hear the house 
kind of shaking and rattling and stuff. And I was like, Ooh, it's picking up out there. Um, but I did not realize I walked down to the ocean today and I did not realize how angry the ocean was. was windy I didn't even go all the way down to the beach I just stood there on the thing and my hair was wet because I had just taken a shower and I was like I should not be out here I went back in I went right back in Overhead. You better not, camera. You better come right back. You better come right back. I made that click. It did not come right back. You know, I hate this. Come right back. Please come back. Please come back. Please come back. You know, I hate you. All right, I'm going to do this. I don't want to have to shut down again. <sighs> Super tired. No, I don't have any videos on the shrug. No, they're not numb at all. I'm just um, taking a break because my other camera, my overhead camera, it um, it has a battery that lasts for about an hour and then when it dies, for whatever reason, my software does not want to pick it back up again. So, um, I'm, I've noticed that when I just give it a few minutes, sometimes it'll, it, it just needs to think or rest or whatever. It's old like me. I don't know. But, um, I'm, so I'm just taking a a break and taking care of my hands. 
Um, that's something called a face blaster that I use on my hands. Um, they're a little puffy. You should really take a break if you crochet. You should really take a break. Here's how I like to stretch my thumb this way. And then you grab it from underneath like you're milking a cow. Not that I've ever milked a cow. <laughs> I have never. But you don't have to stretch really hard. Sometimes I see people and they're stretching really hard. They're really pulling their hands back really hard. You don't have to do that. Be very gentle with your hands. I don't personally like going this way, but I've seen people stretching their hands down this way too. I don't like going that way. Um, I like going this way where you take your thumb over the top and then you stretch this part. That feels really good. And then the other, um, the other thing that I do for my hands is I have one of those infrared mats. And I uh, roll that up um, like in a, in a tube. And I stick my hand in there at night for like 30 minutes. And that, if I'm having any kind of any kind of pain, this is how I do my thumb, okay? I put my hand palm up like this, and then I take the other hand and I come from underneath, okay, and pull it down. That might be out of some people's range of flexibility to do it that way, but that's how I do it. And I'm not pulling it super hard. And breathe. Breathe. All right, let's see if my camera is ready to work again. It's not the camera, it's the software. Linda Weiser says, I crocheted the longest I've ever done at one time this evening, and that was for three hours. I stopped as I was starting to make mistakes. You should definitely take a break every hour and stretch your hands and get up out of your chair stretch your body, your hip flexors, your shoulders, your arms, your hands. I just did my hands. I don't like stretching on these videos, um, my back and shoulders like this, because for one, my armpits are sweaty. That's embarrassing. And um, I'm self-conscious. And also because I'm hypermobile and I don't want people to see, you know, like that and think that they have to stretch like that in order to be doing anything good. I've been trying to get past setup row nine on the star blanket and somehow don't get enough uh, single crochets. What's going on in setup row eight? It's really hard to help and diagnose problems um, because my camera is acting up still. Let me try this one last time. Maybe it'll come back. I am. Um, I think I'm just gonna end my YouTube 
live for tonight because it's it's kind of late. I don't usually come on this late, so it's been like an hour. So I'm just going to go ahead and end the YouTube live. I'm going to hang out on TikTok and answer these questions. And, um, and uh, I'll see you all another time. Bye.